All right. Hey everybody. So I usually don't like doing videos like this. At least where I'm talking. I don't know why. I'm new to this, but anyway, I figured I'd have to to explain some of the misconceptions going on here. This is a Meg. It's my mini. I've got one that I'm still building that's bigger, right? A lot bigger. This is the AMC 320. I can't remember what this is. This was only $45 on, uh, I'm sorry, $25 on Mouser Electronics made by Hitachi Metals. So there's a lot of people that try to replicate these. There's one guy on YouTube that does it kind of right. He's got the right cores, the right wire, seems to know the equations real good. But one of the things that's going on is that a lot of people are using function wave generators to try to do this and you can't do that that's not what Bearden used it's not what he said and it's not what he used he uses pulses of DC that are going in it's cutting in it's energizing and it's dead energizing and dead there's a rise and a decay time that's not going to the negative side a sine wave goes positive and negative right we're not doing that you have to pulse it because yes a moving electric field can only be transferred in a transformer. That's why you got to pulse it, because a static field or a straight DC field isn't going to transfer. And excuse me for my terminology, if it doesn't match your books, I don't, I didn't go to college for this. I do this myself. So anyway, I just wanted to show you, this is, I'm not done yet. I'm still printing a couple more spools. I'm trying to get the the spool prints right. Um, bought a lot of timers and stuff from Mouser. I'm gonna build a board. Probably gonna have one printed for myself too, and uh, I'll publish that probably for free. All my designs will be for free. I put a lot of money into all this to try to replicate it and get it actually working and stable. But if you want to try to replicate this, a couple of things you're going to need. You're going to need something that can hold those spools very well and straight. I just 3D printed these with PETG. It's not that hard. I mean, to make this on Tinkercad, you're going to have to have the real high-frequency cores, really good tight magnets. Those are, I think, in 42 gauss, 1 by 8th inch, 1 by 1 by 8th inch. Uh, I've got it. I've got like $1,000 in magnets, different sizes. So um, this, this particular small one's going to have a second coil right here. So to do the switching back and forth. Um, I don't really like this brand, but it was cheap. It's on eBay. I only get about one coil out of one because you, you don't want to splice these. But this is a good brand. This is one that you could you could get. That was like 47 bucks for a three and a half pound spool. I'm using 24 gauge. You don't have to use that gauge. It just depends. This one I'm going to use 16 gauge, depending. I'll probably do a couple, 16 here for sure. And uh, just depends on how much input voltage I put in because that's what ultimately is going to set your output. Even though, yeah, your coils are stepping it up, but if you put one volt in here, theoretically I should only get two or three because this, uh, this is a hundred spool, this is a hundred turn, and this is a hundred, or 220. On both sides but that's why I'm gonna push in a little more vote I want to push about 50 into this if I can get away with it I'm gonna try we'll get there but uh yeah I just wanted to make this video to help get rid of that misconception he didn't build a sign generator to send power into this and yeah you can get some results it's still experimental but that's not what he did that's not what he did you have to have pulses, and that's something I think you're probably going to have to build it. I don't think they make, they might make something that can do that, but just show you real quick what I'm printing. I'm printing some more of those spools. Almost looks like a grow tin. I just got this enclosure. It's pretty cool. But yeah, just running some Pet G. Uh, I can show you all this real quick. That's my spools I got going on there trying to these are small so the the support doesn't want to stick for some reason but anyway all right i'll uh keep doing these videos as i keep going i'm going to end up probably doing a rough board on the pulses and then eventually i'm going to design my own board hopefully that i could put a lot of this tedious crap on there 
electronically or computerized that way it'll be easy to replicate and I'm not selling nothing I'm not I'm not doing this for money I'm not doing this for any other reason other than to try to you know get some get some more energy get some more over unity energy because a lot of people seem to think it's not true well you don't know who Charles Proteus Diamonds is you haven't read his books you probably don't understand anything about his equations that are in there even though we still use them today so I suggest you go look at his book it's free on archive.org. It's Charles Proteus Steinmetz, Electrical Waves and Impulses and Other Transients. You need to read it and try to figure that out. If, if you only knew what you could do with the data in that book, you'd probably shit yourself, literally. You'd probably shit yourself. It'll take a while to get it, but anyway. Hope you all have a good day. It's a little meg just to give you a perspective. This one I'm really hoping to get, like, maybe, maybe be able to charge a phone on it for free. That would be nice. This one, I'm not even sure. Maybe three, four hundred watts if I'm lucky after I close loop it, which I am going to do. I'm not going to stop somewhere, but anyway. Oh, these were the good spools that came out for this one. They're a little thick, but they fit real good on here. But all right, peace.